Welcome to EuroPCR 2025. My name is Jens Flenstedt Lassen and I'm an interventional cardiologist from Denmark. I'm here today with Giuseppe Diola, who is an interventional cardiologist from uh, Italy. And we are here to discuss and talk about the essentials of the provisional strategy uh, for left main bifurcation treatment. And uh, Giuseppe, why do you find uh, the, uh, the provisional strategy so appealing? Well, uh, Jens, uh, it's a great question. Actually, it, it is appealing because, you know, with a relatively simple procedure, we are, are able to tackle the majority of bifurcation uh, lesions uh, and uh, by implanting the least amount of metal possible. But if needed, we can upgrade it to a two-stand technique. Ah, so, so it's, it's not a two-stand technique from the beginning. It's actually stepwise that it can develop. Yeah, exactly. It's stepwise, but it's, uh, it's not a two-stand technique, but it's not even a one-stand technique. It's a, it's a philosophy, you know, it's a strategy. You implant the first stand with the correct uh, um, steps, and then you know that you are ready uh, if needed to implant a second stand. Yeah, so it's, it's a technique with different steps that develops over time. Could you try to pinpoint where we do have the decision points for what to do as the next step? Well, actually, the uh, implantation of the, the, the first stand is crucial. And what is even more crucial is the post-optimization technique in the proximal main vessel. Because it should be done, uh, pending uh, uh, possible complication if you don't do it, uh, especially uh, crushing the stand once you rewire. Uh, and it should be done properly. So we should take care not to um, go over uh, um, uh, with, the, with the shoulder of the balloon in the distal main vessel or else we could have a plug shift towards the osseum of the side branch. Yeah, so true because it's, it's pretty tricky at exactly that stage because you deteriorate the stent actually, enlarge it to a large amount in the proximal part and, and keep a, a, a more a smaller diameter in the distal part. But you have to be so precise. Yes. So, one of the crucial parts is actually, if you're not precise, you can actually ruin the in, in, entire procedure. Do you have some protection system when, you, when you're doing this? Um, I'm thinking of wires. What, um... Well, actually, what you can do is first, is you can use imaging to identify your landing zones for your stent. Uh, and you have to make sure that you have enough stent in the proximal membrane branch in order to perform pot. Uh, basically, once you have your wire in the side branch, even if you close the side branch by performing pot, then you know that you can always come back and reopen it if need be. So that is one of the good ideas with two wires. You exactly. have a jailed wire, which is actually both a guide and, and uh, a Reference. lifeline if, if, if it closes. Yeah, you, you were talking about imaging. Uh, where, where do you all also use imaging in, 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 in these kinds of, uh, of, of treatments? Well, imaging is, uh, I think it's always nice to have imaging, especially in complex lesions, because it gives you uh, uh, really a good idea about the distal and proximal landing zone, about the caliper, uh, and also if uh, some complication happens or something unexpected happens, it can uh, help you identify what has happened and how to fix it. So it's, a, it's a actually a help during the procedure, both for decision making and for evaluating what is going on and for final evaluating of the of result. The result of so it actually make it more easy for us to be happy with the final re result. But all the steps in the, in, in, in the first stent uh, implantation uh, is actually very crucial. We have mentioned the part, the proximal optimi optimization. But when we have done with that, we need to evaluate the side brands. Exactly. And, and where is uh, the, the problematic decisions around that? Yeah, exactly. So there is a, there is a big decision to make. And I'm going to tell you right away there is no right answer because it's really depending on operator's experience and confidence about what to do with the, with the side branch. What we know is, is that if the operator feel confidence to leave the side branch, maybe it's not too big, uh, then after the first pop, the procedure can be stopped. But if the, 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 the operator thinks that something else should be done, he can do the rewiring and uh, kissing balloon and repot, or he can decide to implant a new stand. But the most important uh, innovation that uh, has emerged over the last few years is the use of the drug-coated balloons. Because by using drug-coated balloons, we could potentially um, save even more metal uh, by saving the, uh, the, the, the stent in the side branch. 
so actually we have introduced an, a new decision point where to actually reduce the amount of metal by introducing the drug losing balloon in, in, the, in the, the steps in the, the provisional pathway. So this is really a, an, an, a new inventment if we want to keep it simple and reduce the amount of metal, but don't keep it too simple. So thank, thank you very much. So what we really have emphasized here today is that we do have a technique, a philosophy that develops stepwise, built on one stand, and there are decision points where you can stop the procedure, but you can also continue if needed and end with two stents and a final result. But keep it simple, but not too simple, and avoid the amount of metal. <laughs>